Hey, we're back once again. It's a new year. Uh, I got a new look going on, so rocking the mustache. Yeah, I noticed that uh, they did some improvements uh, to the set here, some different lighting, and uh, I was told earlier that it brings out every wrinkle in my face. Thank you for that. Uh, well, it's very uh, real. We want to make sure that we're putting out... You know, our, our best face. Um, uh, you're definitely not doing that with me, but that's okay. Anyhow, you know, we, we had a really good uh, holiday. I hope everyone out there had a good Christmas, good New Year's. Um, we have gotten back in the chair finally after some time away, and we hit the ground running. Um, you recently had a conversation with Kevin, who was in Alaska, and he's driving a 93 Chevy 6.5. Um, and he was having some white smoke problems. Now, typically, white smoke can be one of two things, which are air uh, or incorrect timing. And and uh, so we wanted to reach out to Kevin to get some details on the on the um, yeah. And and you know when you're when you're troubleshooting um, like like we do, uh, you know you also do have to take into account where are they in the country. Kevin's in Alaska, right? So. There are some there are some things particular to that area that we have to take into consideration when we're talking, um, but um, basically the call was trying to troubleshoot a white smoking problem, and so we jumped in with him and tried to fix his problem. Yeah, so let's take a look at it. MTR, this is Kevin. Uh, yeah, Kevin. My name is Billy Williams. I work in the diesel department, uh, tech department of diesel care and performance. Yes, sir. And I was asked to give you a call, and just to kind of keep things on the up and up, all my calls are recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, we can hang up and trade emails. But uh, I was asked to give you a call. You had a 93 Chevrolet that um, I, I guess you'd purchased a pump from us. And my notes say that you're having a, a pretty intense smoking problem. Yes. Okay. All right. So my salesman asked me to contact you and try to get some details and see what's going on here. Tell, tell me a little yes. bit about the truck. What, what, what did the truck come in for? Uh, the truck came in, uh, the customer had requested that we put injectors and glow plugs in the truck. Um, and, uh, he wasn't really interested in, in, uh, you know, anything other than that, he, he was pretty sure he had that, that the problem was going to be the injectors. Um, what, what, what was the actual problem? I mean, what, I mean, what it had it? a misfire, All right? It has a misfire. Was it, was it smoking and misfiring or just dead miss? No, no, it was just a, it was just a little bit of shake to the motor. Okay. Um, so we did injectors for him and, um, then, you know, it still had a misfire. We asked him if he wanted us to look at it and he finally said, yeah. And so we began to check the pump that was in it. There was no fuel, kind of a rare issue, but there was no fuel going to cylinder number three. Okay. Um, we had fuel at the other cylinders and, um, so we, uh, we told him he was going to need to put a pump on it. Okay. And that's, and, that's and, where that process began. Okay. And y'all swapped the pump and, uh, I'm assuming that you, you're, you're, you're fueling all the cylinders now. You don't have anything with the number three, but you're getting a lot that's of white correct. smoke. Yes. Okay. Um, Tell me a, a little bit about the timing process. What, what did y'all, did you just performance time it? Did you use a tacking time or what, what was going on? Uh, I just used the timing marks. Okay. All right. That's it. Um, yeah, no advanced timing or anything like that. Um, you know, set the, set the gear. Uh, with the alignment pin in the front, you know, at 12 o'clock when we took it out, put it back in, then rotated the motor around to put the first bolt in, um, set the timing, you know, on the marks up on top. It's, it's dead lined up. 
uh take put it all together run terrible we took it back apart just to double check and make sure we didn't get a fuel line crossed or anything you know looking right. back through all the process of installation uh we cracked every fuel line yeah um, making sure that we had fuel at each line check base pressure at the you know coming into the pump mm-hmm. how, how many miles is on this motor uh, give me a second. It's around 150, 160. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just kind of to get, a, get a general idea. Have you tried advancing the timing at all? Um, I considered it, but I have not. Okay. All right. And, and let me go back to something you previously said. I just want to try to understand you. you uh, I understand you, you lined up the drive pin, uh, with the gear, you said something about spinning mm-hmm. it over to get the first bolt started, and you kind of lost me there. Oh, just, you know, the three bolts that go in the gear in the front. Okay, so, yeah, because you can only see them through that. Okay, I got you now. All right. Um. Well, you know, you sound like a real competent guy. I mean, obviously, white smoke is fuel that's in the cylinder at the wrong time. Um, uh, now, that can – I have had air being introduced in the system cause that. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I've messed with a lot of Ford ADIs. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't have a ton of experience with the, with the Chevy, but it's not greatly different. Um, so, you know, um, I, I'm not speaking from a world experience working on the six, five, um, but, uh, um, the shop owner, which isn't here at the moment, but I've spent a bit of time on the phone with him because he's spent a lot of time on these. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I went through everything I could think to go through and went through everything that he told me to go through. So, well, the, you know, the original timing marks that are there, um, that's a good starting point, but you know, when you okay. start to get into hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand and above, a lot of times you do have to advance the timing slightly just to account for engine wear. Um, And I want to go back to just one quick question. Um, The injectors, did, did you purchase, did you, did you rebuild them yourself or did you purchase a set and yeah, they're brand new injectors. Okay. All right. The, um, um, I, I, Based on what you, you, you're, you're telling me, and I appreciate you taking the time, um, I would try advancing the pump. Now, being a Ford guy, just remember that the, you know, the direction of rotation is opposite with the Chevrolet. So, okay. Um, so in, in I'm going to rotate it but toward the driver's, driver's fender side, well. Toward the driver's fender well in this case. So, you're, um, but... Everything else is the same, you know. You're you're not, you know. Obviously, you don't do it while it's running, but you can just kind of loosen it. <coughs> I, um, I would maybe advance it about two to three degrees, um, and then see if see if that smoke didn't clear up. Um, after the truck sits, is it hard to start? Or does it start pretty quickly or do you have to really grind on it to get it to go? No, I mean, it'll, it'll start trying to hit it. it, Obviously it runs, it runs horrible. Like it doesn't want to idle at all. Right. Um, if it's, if you let it run long enough to get, you know, kind of warm, it will sit there and lope very hard, Mm -hmm. um, and stay running. But, uh, and, you know, if you get up in the range of uh, 1,500 RPMs, it it runs better. <laughs> I don't want to say it runs, sure. you know, it smooths out a bit. Um, but, uh, well, the, yeah, that's kind of where it's at. The other thing that I would check um, is on the side of the injection pump, just like on the Ford, you know, you have the shutoff wire uh, for the solenoid that comes mm-hmm. out of the top of the pump. But on the side, that's the cold start advance unit. 
And the way that's designed is, you know, cold, it has voltage there, and then it gradually decreases as the engine warms up. Um, it'd be worth checking to make sure that you do have voltage there as well, because that's going to affect timing. I mean, it, it's, you know, obviously, you, 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 you know, setting the timing with the engine already in an augmented position is, you know, make you pull your hair out. So I, I would, um, uh, you know, I would, if you've got a voltmeter, you know, just check and make sure you do have voltage there and, and that, you know, it, it's decreasing. Uh, and then I would try to, like I said, I'd try to advance the timing. Um, and, um, um, you know, see what that does. Um, what I can do, uh, if you'd like is, um, uh, I can, uh, reach out to you, you know, you tell me tomorrow or Monday, whenever you think you're going to get around to it. And I'll check with you and see if that solves the problem. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to, I mean, we'll certainly try to, um, mess with it. We, we pulled the pump back off, but, oh, um, okay. If, if getting through the process is going to be putting it back on, I guess we'll put it back on. Okay. Well, I was not aware that the pump had been pulled off. I, um, I mean, have you already sent your old pump back? No, they're both still here. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, the truck ran pretty well with the old pump. It just yeah, had a, I, I, I can't, one dead hole. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, um, um, if it's a situation where you've pulled it back off and, and you're wanting, you know, us to recheck it or do whatever, I mean, we can do that. I, I, I was not aware that you already pulled the pump off. Um, now, you know, you can. Well, uh, I guess as much as anything, you know, the customer's in a position and uh, I'm trying to trying to help him out with that, but um, I'm trying to find the, the quickest solution we can. Um, so if that's me putting the pump back on and the possibility of it working, then I might, you know, I might do that. Uh, if I put the pump back on and wind up, you know, with nothing there, I want to get a replacement as quick as I can. <laughs> right. You know, there, 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 there's kind of two options here at this point. Um, you know, one would be to just go ahead and send you a replacement pump. And obviously if you're dealing with the same issue, then you'll know what to do then. Um, let, let me do this. Let me, uh, let me reach out to, uh, I think you were dealing with, uh, Looks like Spencer. Let me reach out to Spencer and find out what he would think would be best, and I'll have uh, him okay. give you a call. Uh, it'll be sometime this afternoon. I think you're three hours behind us. Is, is it like 9 o'clock where you are? Yeah, we're we're 9.30. Okay, all right, all right. Well, he, he should be able to reach um, um, reach out to you for the end of the day um, and because um, it might be simpler at this juncture just to send you a completely different pump to avoid, you know, I mean, we're all, issue. we're all in agreement. You put the, yeah. If you put the pump, another different pump on your same problem, then, then obviously. Right. Uh, right. So let me talk to Spencer and, uh, <laughs> Which, I, I, I bought, I was buying pumps from, uh, uh, I don't remember what it was. IDI performance up in, up in Washington. Um, my brain just went blank of who it is, but, um, I put, I put four pumps on a 94 Ford before I got a good one from them. So. <laughs> oh my. Uh-huh. Well, we certainly want, they to. would run good, but the, but the plate was separating when they got hot. Ah, uh, yeah. And they had not. Yeah. And so then they wouldn't crank back and the guy kept telling me, I test them, I test them and I've never had this happen. I'm like, look, I can pour water on it. It'll crank back up. Yeah. Unfortunately, our test equipment, um, for those pumps never incorporated, a um, uh, in an advanced heat element now in, in certain, right. certain applications. And I know certain technicians that will actually literally put a heat gun to the, to the pump. And that, and that, that identifies about 80% of that problem. A few slip through, I mean, you, you just can't get it hot enough on a test stand to duplicate that condition right. in certain instances, but but let me reach out to Spencer, and uh, this is my cell number. You can call me at any time, but Spencer will be handling it from here on out. I'll get with him, 
and uh, we'll see what uh, we can do about um, getting this taken care of. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care now. Bye. So, in addition to needing to know where people are at in the country, it also helps to know where they're at in their process working with uh, it, their trucks. It, it does. And, and, and I'll tell you, you know, it, it's, it's very frustrating for mechanics out there because so much of what these guys do is very time-based. And, and sometimes it's you're right there. Your instinct is, I think I've got a problem. Let's go ahead and pull this part back off. Mm-hmm. Um, that creates some problems down the line. Um, certainly troubleshooting ends at that point. Um, in this instance, we thought it would probably be best to go ahead and send him a replacement pump just to uh, – because whether he installs the previous pump or this pump, he's got to do another pump installation because he's pulled it back off. Mm -hmm. And um, so in this instance, we can get his unit back, put it through the shop, you know, get it uh, back shelf worthy, get him a completely different unit. Um, Again, you know, he, he, uh, if he continues to have uh, white smoking issues, at least he'll be that much further ahead to know that it's most likely not fuel system. So this instance was not typically how we like to handle it, but because of circumstances, I think that's the route that we will go. And hopefully right. we can get taken, Kevin taken care of. Uh, we'll have him put on a follow-up. Uh, right. So we will give him uh, a week, 10 days or so. We'll check back with him, and hopefully uh, he'll get this truck up and running. Absolutely. And just as a general note out there, you know, if you have a problem that you're troubleshooting with your truck and you're getting in the weeds with it, don't be afraid to call around. It doesn't have to be us, but like find someone. E- e- they, they could be more of an expert, uh, you know, on the specific application that you're working with, or even if it's someone who's at the same level as you, just to get a new set of eyes on things so that you don't get so in the weeds uh, working on these trucks. I, you know, I totally agree, and and um, and and most people in in this industry. Um, be it, you know, working at the parts counter, working at a shop or someone like me, who's kind of, you know, just old and done it for a few years. A few Mo- is an, an understatement. <laughs> Most people, uh, you know, they'll, they're going to talk through your problems. Right. And if nothing else, you get the benefit. Like with me, you get the benefit of a guy who's made a lot of mistakes. Sure. sure. So, you know, I learned a lot from him. And, and so, um, just talking it out with people before you go through this big exercise and, and, um, you know, start ripping stuff back off, you know, you take a pause, you know, pick up a phone, uh, and discuss the problem. A lot of times you'll pick up on, on little things. I'm a firm believer. If you ask the right questions and continue to ask questions, you will eventually hit on something. And, um, you know, you want to call them diesel detectives, whatever. (laughs) But if you just keep asking questions, you will find that nuance um, that is something that kind of your ears perk and you go, okay, let's stop. Let's let's examine this a little bit further. And that's what we did with Kevin. Hopefully we can get him taken care of. We'll check back with him. Uh, But we certainly appreciate the call. Yep. So we will see you next time. Happy New Year to everyone out there. Yes. And call in if you have problems with your diesel. Bye. Yes, I'm built out and bound to go. I'm going to leave here running because walking is most too slow. All right. Back to one.